Hello and welcome to Fight News Now Extra. It's John Pollock with you. We have John Ramdean and Robin Black coming up to break down all of today's news, including Fedor Emelianenko commenting on performance-enhancing drugs in the sport. Ronda Rousey has more words for Ariane Celeste, and Josh Koscheck discusses his fighting future. Josh Koscheck returns to action this Saturday night at UFC 184 and will meet Jake Ellenberger in their welterweight bout. Koscheck has lost his last three fights and not fought since November 2013, where he was stopped by Tyron Woodley at UFC 167. Koscheck spoke to MMAJunkie.com heading into this weekend's fight and stated he never officially told Dana White he was retiring after the Woodley loss, and he's hopeful of getting two more wins after this fight and then assessing his future. The feud that will not die between women's bantamweight champion Ronda Rousey and UFC ring card girl Ariane Celeste continued during fight week. Celeste was on MMA Junkie Radio and called Rousey a bully, and the champion responded that she simply doesn't believe that ring card girls should be paid more than any fighters. What did I say that was a bully? I said that the fighters should get paid more than the ring girls? Yeah, How does that make me a bully? That makes me fucking right. I'm sorry, but she wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for the fighters. She wouldn't. Do you think her walking in circles around the two guys or two girls out there like fighting for their lives is worth more? I think she works harder than they do. I didn't say that she needed a pay cut. I said either the ring card girls are paid too much or the fighters aren't paid enough. For her to take that personally, do you know what would have been the best thing for her to say? Oh my God, you know, these fighters, they work so hard and I wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for them and I just admire them so much and yeah, I definitely think that they should get paid more than anybody in that arena tonight. There you go, there's PR lesson for her. And finally, Fyodor Emelianenko is in the U.S. at the moment as he is involved in a number of promotional appearances for Bellator ahead of their Friday night card in Connecticut. MMAfighting.com caught up with the former Pride heavyweight champion and he shared his thoughts on drug testing in the sport. Emelianenko believes there should be harsher penalties and that there should be room for more control within the industry. We look ahead to Saturday night's UFC 184 card. It all kicks off here on Fight Network with our preview show at 7 Eastern. John Ramdean, and Robin Black and I getting you set. And then we'll send you off to TSN2 for the four-fight prelim card from Los Angeles. And then pay-per-view at 10 Eastern headline by Ronda Rousey and Kat Zingano. Five rounds for the Women's Bantamweight Championship. We are here with Robin Black and the returning John Ramdean, who was in Montreal all week for UFC 186 uh, media days, I guess it was. We missed you, John. Tell us about uh, Montreal. You spoke to everyone and anyone in Montreal. Yeah, Demetrius Johnson getting ready for Kyoji Horiguchi coming up April 25th. TJ Dillashaw, Hennem Barrow. Uh, I think Hennem Barrow was Horiguchi there. flew all the way for That's, this media day from and Japan. So, same with Barrow. And Barrow was absolutely blown away that Montreal was minus 35. He could not believe that human beings lived in this type of environment. Uh, but the day before, we went over to TriStar. Rory McDonald getting ready, obviously, to uh, uh, take on Robbie Lawler for the second time, this, for, this time for the UFC Welterweight Championship. So the vibe in TriStar is really cool right now because, you know, I think for years a lot of people thought it was a one-trick pony. This is the gym of George St. Pierre and that, uh, you know, it doesn't matter who coaches him because George St. Pierre is a special athlete. Now that, uh, you know, you're seeing so many people uh, emerge from TriStar and you're seeing all these athletes travel from all over the world uh, to call TriStar home, including Joseph Duffy, who's going to be making his UFC debut very, very shortly. Mm -hmm. Robbie Peralta, who's got Clay Guida coming up. He was at TriStar, so right now it's the who's who of mixed martial arts. When you were talking to Dillashaw, he mentioned that he fought in the Bell Center before. Yeah. What was the story, the difference between then and now? Yeah, he said it was very, very cool because the first time he was at the Bell Center, he said he was on the undercard taking on Issei Tamura. That's right. He said the next time I'm the champion of the world and I'm headlining the show. So obviously cool. a different mindset. So to get these the different perspectives was very, very cool. I guess it tells you the weight of a Kyoji oh. Horaguchi or a Henan Barrow versus Quentin Jack. Jackson, who is not going to be making his way up yeah, to right. Canada in the middle of February. Jackson, don't go that way, man. That guy <laughs> is I'll not do gonna, April, yeah, but I'm yeah, not yeah. doing February. He's not going to hang out in minus 30. For our friends that don't live in Canada, this is minus 30 Celsius. And it is cold. Like, they have this wind it's, chill thing yeah. going where they'll say wind chill of, you know, it has a, a number and it says exposed skin freezes in five minutes. And then yeah. there's another one, it's exposed true. skin freezes in, in one, two minutes. And one minute. And one minute. And where he was, minus 30 and wind chill, exposed skin freezes immediately upon contact. Hen and Barrow, good on you, man, for coming We're up. Wearing some pink gloves because he was really, really surprised wearing a fall jacket at the top of Mount Royale. Uh, he was not happy. 
uh, a card we haven't talked too much about this week, but it is a, a very big card. Bellator 134 on Friday night. I'm very intrigued by the main event. Emmanuel Newton, who's always got a very unorthodox style, against Liam McGeary. And we're really going to see where Liam McGeary, what the, the litmus test is on Friday. He ran through that tournament, had arguably the best submission of 2014. Now he gets his title fight, super charismatic fighter. And I think Liam McGeary, if he wins on Friday, this has a chance to be a real true Bellator homegrown star. Very, very true, but it also comes down to the test. And we've seen in the past, guys, you know, guys have looked good until they go up against somebody that has a serious background. And I know a lot of the casual fans still might not know who Emmanuel Newton is, but this guy is a serious competitor. He can hang with the best 205-pound fighters in the world. And you mentioned how unorthodox he is. I mean, look at that spinning back fist, uh, landing on King Mo, stopping the freight train. The way he uh, came back against Linton right. Vassell, yeah. I mean, man, he was in the on the verge of tapping out a, a true gutsy re rebound in that fight for him. The reason Emmanuel New Newton is so fun to watch for analysts and coaches and fighters, and people who really like technique, is because he does everything totally wrong. Yeah. And he's done everything totally wrong for so long that it has become totally right. He's very good at it. The rules are all broken. Rules were meant to be broken, except for most people can't break them and win. This guy broke them all and found a way to make that better and uh, so it makes him a really interesting fighter and very hard to train for. McGeary's going to have a tough time with him but you're absolutely right if McGeary can find a way that's a Bellator real uh, real Quick, star. Do, I think. do you like King Mo going up to heavyweight quickly? Uh, sure King Mo is an entertainer so we'll th I, I just want to see what type of performance Czech he has. Congo going to knock him out. You also got Paul Daly in action should be a fun Bellator card Friday night in Connecticut. We have more Fight News Now Extra. It's coming up now.